Caleb, Caleb, go! Ah! <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome to a Dayton Dissects of Reassembly. A space RTS indie game where you build your own spaceship, got lots of different factions, it's super cool. Uh, let's, let's show you the different factions I've unlocked. Currently there's only one faction that I haven't unlocked. We got, uh, Water Nation, Fire Nation, Plant People, all kinds of good stuff. I've, uh, rolled as the humans to unlock most of this stuff, and I'll hop into it to show you guys around a little bit. First thing you might notice is, uh, the controls. There are three different control schemes. The first one allows your mouse to rotate the ship around, and pressing W will move it forward, uh... D to the side, A to the side, S is back, and uh, it's it's pretty dynamic. Although you have to keep uh, pay att pay attention to which way your ship is facing. Keyboard rotating the ship is uh, a little less uh, a little less optimal in my opinion, <laughs> just because it, it you have to do multiple things at the same time. Oh, I'm being attacked. Um, but you can shoot while you're flying away, which is a pretty cool addition. Absolute controls, uh, A is always, or W is always north, S is always south, uh, and the keyboard rotates your ship, so depending on which way you're facing, your thrusters will activate in different ways. I prefer cursor rotating the ship, although it does, uh offer a little less flexibility. I've built my ship with that in mind. So, the first thing you're gonna wanna do in the game is fly around and destroy other ships or plants, and you'll generate uh, R, which is resources, I assume. And once you have enough resources, you'll be able to trade those in for C, which is currency. And then you'll be able to go to the upgrade screen in order to buy new parts. This is the upgrade screen. I have bought almost all of the parts currently. There is a plasma cannon and an antimatter cannon that are extremely expensive that I haven't jumped for just yet. But uh, all the parts are relatively good. And if you look at the P on the part, Right next to the name, it designates basically how powerful the part is. And your ship has a P limit, which can also be upgraded with the currency C. The, your P limit is in the upper left corner under the name of your ship. Your ship can be renamed. This is the Dayton, my current ship. I refer to it as the Broodmother. It has a factory on the back here, which allows it to spawn additional ships. Uh, harvesters, storage containers... There's a generator to power my weapons. This command module is what determines whether or not, whether the ship is alive or not. Once it's blown up, it is over for you. And uh, the generators also create like a giant explosion. So if the generator gets hit, it usually blows up the command module. So the, the, the idea is to keep your ship facing with the front and all these legs and things protecting your command module. There's a giant mass of guns. I've got proton swords. I've got proton beams, which basically cut through ships. Uh, the proton beams have a longer range but are weaker, and the proton swords basically cut anything up like butter once uh, you get close to it. I've got three shield projectors on my ship as well, and uh, a few auto cannons to fill in the empty spaces. There's a couple of lasers, though I haven't found much use for them. I basically slapped those on because they're cheap. And then I've got uh, tons of missile launchers and drone launchers, which can be launched with the right click. So extremely, extremely versatile ship. Um, it can take things from range as well as uh, up close, although taking things out from a range takes uh, a bit longer just because... You're working with the drones and the missiles instead of ramming into things and cutting them up. <laughs> you uh, drop you drop your resources that you collect off at uh, spawn stations, which are designated with a green 
uh, diamond. There's a guy over here at my spawn station. And since I have a factory equipped currently, I'm not going to turn my, uh, turn anything in for spawns. Oh, shit. Woo! I won't turn any R in for C when I have a factory ship attached because, um, basically the factory allows me to spawn my own ships. Right now I need 437 more. Because my fleet is quite expensive. Um, you can build all the different ships in your fleet. We saw this station a while ago, uh, which acts as a spawn station. Then there's a teleporter station as well. I have these mini freights to fly around and collect things. And then, um, right now my, my build order is, uh, the factory, which basically allows me to build more factories. And I actually need to remove some of this. Good. Uh, the archer basically has a bunch of proton cannons and it'll tear things apart from quite a range. The spearman has proton swords everywhere and a, a ton of shields and uh, it's basically meant to just get in there and eat, eat things alive. It also has some missile launchers. The spy is just a ton of drones. I love, love spawning spies but obviously they're super expensive. So. Once you get the fleet together, uh, it's quite a dooming thing. They all work pretty well together. And that's one of the things that you have to think about when constructing your fleet. Oof. That guy almost got me. Yep, he got down to the shield, all right. And we wait for our ship to reassemble between combat. Hence, reassembly. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, there's part of my ship, and I'm sucking the pieces off of it, <laughs> slapping them back onto my own ship, which I think is a really cool addition. I love the music. I love the particle effects. This game is just freaking amazing to me, especially with all the different races. There's just so much replayability and so much potential in this game. So as you get more and more C and R, you will want to upgrade your ship further and further and I can now replace these lasers with something a bit more useful so I'm not sure proton sword maybe seems cool and now it's telling me I need 150 additional P in order to make those upgrades so I go over to my upgrade screen and permanently increase my P with this button here Boop, plus 350 P so now we're well over the limit, and although I won't be able to spawn a ship with that R, my own ship is now considerably more powerful. Oh wow. I need to book it out of there. That ain't good. Get it, get it. Yeah. When you first start this game out, you're extremely small. I like to think of this as, like, the most intense game of fishy there is. <laughs> you remember that fishy game? Well, this kicks the shit out of that. It's fishy in space. It's what Spore wanted to become, but never was. I... I I'm taken aback at how much I love this game. It's so fantastic. Kill him, kill him, kill him! Ah! Cut to the middle of that big guy? No problem. Holy shit. Get this fucking guy. Yes. Blue is no match for pink! Looks to be safe. Spawn another ship up. Oh, and we lost a ship. <laughs> so spawn another one! I don't give a fuck! I'll spawn all day, kids! Ah! 
put this fucking thing apart. Yes! And then that one. And then that one. Yeah! You want some more? Blue fuckers? Look at this fucking big guy. Pick you somebody? You're nobody! Ah! Shit. So we lost our fleet by dying. They're still out there floating around. The game goes on and on and on as long as you want it to. I think it's a fantastic game. I would highly recommend it to anybody who in enjoys uh, space and sandbox games. For sure. Let's save. Let's quit. Let's review. So, friends. Reassembly by Anisopter Games. Amazing, amazing gem. Amazing indie gem. I, I can't say enough good things about it. So, I'll just jump right into the score breakdown. For the controls, I've given it a 9 out of 10. They are really, really good. Uh, it gives you a variety of options, so you can surely find something that will suit your needs. The fun factor, I've given a 10 out of 10. It's an extremely fun game, and uh, it, it keeps me giving, getting that one just one more turn feeling uh, over and over and over again. And it's really easy to sit down and dump 8 hours in this game, no problem. Difficulty, 9 out of 10. It's an extremely difficult game, especially when you're uh, the little fish in the pond. But as you get bigger and bigger, um, the challenges also get more intense. So the difficulty does stay pretty high throughout. Replayability is a 10 out of 10 with so many different factions and so many different weapons. All the factions have different uh, ship layouts and everything. It's, it's an extremely replayable game and you'll find yourself definitely doing more than just one playthrough. The innovation, 9 out of 10. I've seen space games like this before, but never on this scale. It really does create a whole living environment, and, you know, there's plant species that spawn, and they actually distribute spores and seeds and grow that way. It's, it's just amazing to me how innovative this game is, so fantastic job. The graphics are a 9 out of 10. They are definitely indie graphics, um... That is to say, they're not particularly high res. However, the particle effects and all of the different things with the weapons and the trails when you're flying, it's, it, oh, it's just so gorgeous. I don't understand how you, how you could not like the graphics. The music is a 7 out of 10. It gets a little dissonant at times, but overall, I think it serves the purpose pretty well, especially since you're exploring an alien world. Uh... The sound effects I've given an 8 out of 10. I love it when the generators explode. I love the sounds that the different uh, guns make. All the different lasers have kind of a different sound to them. Uh, that even goes between factions. The different weapons uh, between factions have different sounds to them. So, amazing job on the sound effects. 8 out of 10. Story, there is none to speak of. However, I've decided to give it a 5 out of 10 just because I don't think a game like this really needs a story. If anything, you're creating your own story with your domination of the galaxy, whether that be through warlike means, as I like to do it, or you can just go around and collect plants and be cool with everybody, which I think is a pretty nice option as well. Level design, 8 out of 10. I love how alive everything is. I love how everything interacts with... Uh, not just... Uh, NPC factions won't just come after you. They'll actually fight each other if... Uh, you know, sometimes two NPCs will collide with your fleet, and then you've got a three-way battle going on. And it's just a super, super amazing thing. I love this game so, so much. I've given it an 84 out of 100. Uh, that is on par with Chasm, which, while it's not anywhere near the same genre, I believe they are both of the same quality, so I am confident with my score on this one. Fantastic game. I highly suggest you check it out. Thank you so much to Annie Scepter Games and to Indie Voyage for giving me the review copy. And I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. This has been Reassembly. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I hope to see you in the next time, friends. Until then. Bye-bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. 
see you again Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends